what would a second Donald Trump term look like? Well, he cannot be the next president um, it, it, because if he is. You can't imagine the things that he's going to do. Mexico, Canada. We can't go to Canada because eventually Canada will become annexed to America. And shoot visitors to the White House. Yeah, that means he can shoot the first lady. We're going to see violence, the likes of which we didn't even see on January 6th. Make it illegal to run against him, to throw his opponents in jail, to shut down the media. He will make himself into the Fuhrer and he will make everybody raise their hand and salute him. Using martial law against the American people. Terminate the Constitution. To rewrite the Constitution. Create mass internment camps. Throw everyone into Gitmo. Might be sent to jail or their rights might be suppressed especially minority groups in society. You might have any number of things happen to you and your family. Every one of us, our freedom, our liberty, none of us is safe. It's going to have people around him executing against an enemy's list. Assassinate generals. Ordering troops uh, to um, attack American citizens. Trump's very well-armed and extremist base will try to kill people. He's going to basically burn the house down. He will <laughs> unravel the institutions of our democracy. Draw similarities between... Good Lord, <laughs> this is, I'm so happy people put this together because this is what I was talking about when I covered it. Who did I cover? It was one of our guests. And I've been saying like, oh, it was Ajamu. I was like, have you seen this just intense, like uptick in uh, Donald Trump hysteria in the language that they're using? And someone put all of, or most of those clips together. And, but you hear the adjectives, you hear the language. It's like, who is this Mussolini Hitler? Mussolini and Hitler. Adolf Hitler and Benito Mussolini. It makes Donald Trump even more dangerous. He wants to take away your vote. Senate and the House are immediately going to be paralyzed. People will begin in their minds to censor themselves. They might say, well, maybe I shouldn't say this. This is the end of democracy. Yeah. I think that could be the end of our democracy. But democracy is dead if Trump is reelected. Those yet to Putin that democracy will be at risk. The absolute destruction of the Justice Department as we know it. The Justice Department Department could be entirely transformed. I'm really gone. concerned about that. Every really person actually. who was associated with the attempted coup elevated in the administration. He's reelected. He will yeah. curb transgender rights and the rule of law. Arrest political opponents to persecute, not prosecute, but persecute his enemies. Take a wrecking ball to the rule of law. He's going to make the law. Everyone else will have to follow. A vote for Donald Trump uh, may mean the last election that you ever get to vote in. To go after the independent and free parts of American civic life. He would tear down our institutions. Purge the government of employees. Department by department effort to weaponize the powers of the government. To use the military to quash protests. Reading the government of all democratic safeguards. Junking American democracy as we have always known it. That he would try to stay in office beyond a second term. That he would never leave office. There's no question. Trump is reelected. He won't leave. Donald Trump will never leave office voluntarily. And what that means is that everybody who wants us to remain a republic has to put every other thing aside and work together urgently right now to stop that from happening. Very scary, huh? But that, I mean, Trump hysteria, and that comes from the African reporter. I always refer to him in that way, but his name is Simon, chief White House correspondent at Today News Africa in Washington. Great. Um, and he's he's very uh, conservative leaning, I must say. Um, let's go here and view a couple of quote tweets and see if there's any viral ones here. Here's Jimmy Dore. They'll say absolutely not anything. They'll do absolutely anything to get you to vote Biden, except do anything to improve the lives of the people they want votes from. Let me make that smaller so you can see the whole thing. That's Jimmy Dore. Let's see if there's anybody. Else. Oh, he made another comment. <laughs> I guess I'll read these two and then be done. So the establishment is in full meltdown. Most of these, most of these things they claim Trump will do, they have already done. They've definitely cleared democracy decades ago. U.S. is an oligarch or plutocracy, oligarchy or plutocracy. And they've politicized and destroyed the Justice Department to go uh, after Donald Trump. 
I absolutely agree with that. In repeated transpar uh, transparently political prosecutions, every accusation they make is a confession. And uh, that is spot on uh, Jimmy Dore. And like I said, that was not a segment. I just wanted to play that video. I think there's another video that's not a segment I just want to play. I'm clearing all these out since I have some time. Wife is home. So I didn't have to, she picked up the daughter, so I didn't have to go do that. Or working from home. She's not off. She's working from home. Um, Trump hysteria. What was oh the other uh thing I wanted to show you a quick video. I showed that one, that one, that one. Biden apologist. Is it this? It might be this one. Oh, listen to this one. So this is Democratic baffled, says Democratic pollster baffled by progressives not supporting Biden. So this is something Belcher, I believe his name is something Belcher, but he comes on um, to be the black voice. He's a pollster um, to be old oh, black people. This he's going to even mention something like that. But that's not the point is not to, to speak from the black point of view, but he's baffled that progressives aren't like falling in line um, for Joe Biden. Baffled progressives aren't all right, falling in line. I think I have it now. I'm gonna put this banner up and then I'm gonna play this video. This is just for marking purposes here. You may have seen this already. Uh, this is from the Chris Hayes Show. And here we go with this clip from the Chris Hayes Show. It's, it's a doozy. Hey, Chris, I am completely baffled. I am. I'm baffled by the lack of an engagement <clears throat> from progressives around, around this good economic news. So I, I, there's two things I want to say this. One is we've been oversold uh, on the simplicity of it's just the economy. Because it's not just the economy. Correct. Uh, and, you know, voters are a lot more uh, complicated than that. There are multiple variables. And so many voters aren't even, don't even make most of the sense of their lives from, from an economic transaction. And by the way, the young voters, which we're going to talk about here shortly, that are most problematic for Biden are showing us that it's simply not the, not, not the economy. But also what I think is happening, Chris, is there is this struggle within progressive circles. And it's driving me absolutely insane because the Republicans, as you showed, I totally do not agree. have this same conversation. It is, well, people don't feel like the economy is good, so we can't talk about the economy. And I absolutely want to scream because Republicans don't have that problem, Chris. The economy is, not, people aren't gonna feel it unless we're actually telling them and showing them, right? We do have to declare that it's morning in America and that things are good, are getting better. And we have to go out there and start selling and promoting it. We can't just sit back and wait for people to start feeling it or it's gonna be, or it's gonna be too late. Yeah, so I, can I say I, something I, I about that? I am baffled by what's happening. I, I sort of understand it. I'm baffled by that strategy that you tell people what you're experiencing is not true. It is actually a good economy. Yeah, you can't afford rent and gas, but the economy is still doing good. I can't, I don't under, I'm baffled by that point of view and that strategy that you have. And let's listen uh, to Chris. Because I think there's this part of it is that, you know, if you're coming from a progressive perspective, you think that the baseline of American capitalism is cool, capricious, and often predatory, which I do. <laughs> I'm on the record saying that. And so any that's true under any president. Like the, the basics, the, the level of the social safety net we have, the basic ways that ca capitalism operates in this country is too harsh and too unequal, and people get screwed at the bottom too much. And that is true president to president to president, right? But in terms of what changes between presidents, the other thing I would say about this is from a left progressive perspective, it's not just, oh, the stock market's up. It's that the biggest gains to wages have been the bottom 40% of the wage distribution. It's that the biggest. So they're this is what they're saying. So they're trying every which way to talk you out of, uh, uh, talk you out of your analysis that the economy is not doing well for you. Because wages are up. What does wages being up have to, what does wages being up have to do, I'm sorry, what does wages, how does wages being up fix the cost of food? 
fix the cost of rent. So wages are up, but still not adequate. So what is the point that you're saying? You see what I'm saying? It's like they want you to be happy over crumbs and not just a little happy. They want you to be hop, skipping and jumping happy over crumbs. And they can't understand why you're not giving them credit. Outpouring of labor organizing, labor militancy and strikes in 30 years has happened under this president and with his support. He's saying, I don't understand. Do you, what you're. I think labor militancy and strikes in 30 years has happened under this president and with his support. And with I'm going to rewind. He's going to say this, but there's, there's a couple of lying lines back to back. So let's listen. Outpouring of yeah. labor organizing, labor militancy and strikes in. My bad. I always don't rewind this far back enough. Here we go. Like the, the basics, the, the level of the social safety net we have, the basic ways that ca capitalism operates in this country is too harsh and too unequal, and people get screwed at the bottom too much. And that is true president to president to president, right? But in terms of what changes between presidents. The so now he's addressing what changes between presidents. So he's saying, so like he's talking against his own argument. So he already established capitalism established sort of a baseline of poverty. Those people are grandfathered in president to president. He acknowledge, he's acknowledging that. Those are the people that saying the economy's bad. Chris? The people that you just moved to the side and said those are grandfathered in president, those are the people who are saying the economy is doing terrible. The other thing I would say about this is from a left progressive perspective, it's not just, oh, the stock market's up. It's that the biggest gains to wages. Have so he's saying analyzing this from a left perspective. This is the reason why we should be up on the economy. Let's see what he lists here in the bottom 40 percent of the wage distribution. So the increase in the the mild uh, or the milk toast increase in wages has been at the bottom 40%. So the bottom 40%, look at it this way. The bottom 40% needs $100 to survive. Let's just keep it a nice round number. And uh, the bottom 40% right now makes, it only has $10 towards that. So they're doing 10. Now you get five. He's saying you should be dropping it for joy because you went from five, 10 to five. That's an increase, but you need $100 to get what you need. Do you get it with that? So why wouldn't you still describe the economy as bad because you still don't have the $100 that you need to make the purchase? They're saying because you have a little more money towards that, you should be jumping for joy happy. And that is completely absurd. It's the biggest outpouring of yeah. labor organizing, labor militancy. And That's against your point. The biggest outpouring of labor organizing means that the economy is not doing well, means that wages aren't going up fast enough. Isn't that what that means? strikes in 30 years has happened under this president and with his support and with and with his support you see the whitewashing if you're listening to this progressive and this is what we just say the pre, the professional mass professional management progressive look what they're telling workers look what he's saying to workers this is great for you guys And the audacity for him to say, with the support of this president, is just a lie. That's exaggeration. That is such an exaggeration that that's a lie. How you can say that after he broke the, the railroad strike is beyond me.
a person from the left. Now, if you're a conservative, yeah, if you're yeah, a capitalist, you're going to skip over that part. It's beyond me that a person who's quote unquote left is not including that in what they're saying. 30 years has happened under this president and with his support and with the nope. support of the NLRB. Oh it's that inequality across almost every metric has shrunk considerably over the two years. So it's not inequality over across the board has shrunken considerably. Inequality has shrunken considerably over two years, is what he said. I saw somebody say, get ready for Trump. That's it. If this is your strategy, outright lies that can be challenged real time. Not just, okay, the big headline numbers are good, but... You know, from a left or progressive perspective, it's not good. No, actually, from that perspective, it's no, because he said you here he said the NLRB, what what the other uh pseudo NATO left has been trying to sell us on on Joe Biden. NLRB, no, these are really good shit. No, I'm sorry, sir, but you're talking about a crumb of a crumb of a crumb. So you're talking about a crumb is this side is magnified, half of that shit, then another half, a crumb of a crumb. Are the things you're listing as left pers uh, perspectives? It, it's actually surprisingly good. <laughs> no, it's, they, it's they, remarkably they, well. And that is the same talking point that Kyle Kalinsky and Crystal Ball said. That's the, when the, in, in, in the debate with Bree. That is the exact thing they said. They said it's not just a little bit; it's a lot. And look, I was just in focus groups last night. And Chris, no, no one knows. You know, I was uh, and, and and folks groups with with sporadic voters who who are not well, again nev will never vote for Donald Trump, but are not happy with Joe Biden and are mm -hmm. holding back from Joe Biden. And 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 they bring up this, this student loan stuff is like he made us promises about student loan. There's zero context around around student loans. About Republicans actually took him to court to stop it. Oh, and by the oh, way, interesting. He's been able to he's been able to actually, uh, you know. Um, uh, and let go of 130 some billion dollars in student debt, sort of for, forgive it. And there's no context or understanding of it. So I, I, I have to press up my progressive friends. Like, we've got to start doing a better job of messaging. And we can't wait for, for two or three months out from the election cycle, as sometimes we often do. These younger voters are upset. They don't think anything's happening. They don't think that the Biden administration and Democrats in Congress are paying attention to their issues or even fighting for them. And and, this, and the story that you've laid out, Chris, is we think that we think they're not doing any of that. Not that they didn't pass the fifteen dollar minimum wage like they promised. Not that they didn't bring uh, 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 Medicare for all to a vote. We just think it. So apparently, there's you know money uh, dropping from the trees and. Uh, my fridge is overflowing with food. My bank account, you know, I go to an ATM, money just jumping out of the bank account, and I have no clue. I just need to be told, and then somehow I'm going to see all the gut stuff around me. It's completely absurd. When they mean by messaging, they mean propagandize the people. That's what they're talking about. He's talking about we need a harder propaganda, prop uh, propaganda game here. And this is not going to cut it. 